All, all blurs together, right? Thank you for being here. We'll put in our usual reminders to please silence your cell phones and please shoot no video, including cell phone video feeds are available of the press conference. Uh, when we get to you, we'll ask that you direct one question to one specific person so we can get the camera shots in their uh, best position. We have head coach Jarrett Elliott and our student athletes are Madison Skinner, Asia O'Neill, and Ella Swindle. And coach, when you're ready, we'll ask for your comments on today. We're happy to wake up and have an opportunity to stick together and, and go for the national championship. Um, you know, it's been a whirlwind, obviously, and last night got done late, and we had the All-American banquet this morning, but uh, just a quick reflection this morning when I woke up, I was just, I'm just so happy with the, with the process of this group went through, the leadership and the quality of women that we have, and it's just, it's been so much fun to go through and to see this ride, um, because nobody had us picked to get here, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a special moment to be able to have a Texas-Nebraska game on ABC and national television to... Uh, really blow it out of the park. We'll open it up for your questions. We can start here. Hey, uh, Ella, how you doing? A um, couple questions real quick. Do you know Bergen Riley at all? Like, have your paths crossed? And, and if so, how? When you watch her play, like, how do you analyze her? Those are my two questions. Yeah, so Bergen and I have played in a couple of USA tryouts together. And so we've gotten to know each other. We're actually roommates. So we've gotten to know her. She's a nice girl. And I'm excited to play against her. Um, she's definitely a great competitor, a great player. Um, it'll be fun to have two freshman setters going against each other. So yeah, super excited. And go here in the first the row, last please. Time? Does that anybody know when the last time that happened? Yes. That's what I was trying to figure out. So two, two freshman setters. In the title game. Leo Haggerty, <laughs> AFW Sports. I asked Coach Cooper when they were in the middle of their two Stanley Cup in a row run, I said, what does that mean? He said, you win one, you're good. You win two in a row, you're special. Would you agree with that? Um, I think it says a lot about the program, a lot more than the team, you know, because it's a different team. Uh, this team is completely different than last year's team, and they've had to go through different struggles and build different unities and develop in different kind of ways to get to this point. But, you know, it, it says a lot about I, – I, look, I think we bring our alumni back a lot. We bring um, – you know, we're getting text messages. I shared one the other day with our team. There, there's just a community that we have at Texas, and so there's, there's so many people besides the, the 18 players that we have that are cheering each other on, and there's a, a unique group of women that are just always supporting you, and it's, it's a lifelong – you know, you're forever a lifelong Longhorn. Go right here, please. Yeah, Madison, I know when you, when you get into college, you're not thinking, I'm going to make history, but you were part of the first SEC team to win. Now you're with Texas trying to win back-to-back -back titles. Can you kind of put that journey into perspective for us right now, what you've, what you've accomplished and maybe can accomplish even further on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it's stuff that you dream of as a little girl. And just starting out, you see all the amazing people that come before you. And um, you want to be just like them. But just to be able to make history um, in different places has been awesome. And um, it just goes back to the people I'm surrounded by. And um, they've pushed me and challenged me. And so many people have impacted my life and made me into the person and player I am today. And um, it's just great to obviously be with this team and be able to make history and hopefully go back to back as well. You can go back here, please. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna ask Ella, and then you two also. Ella, if you could point at, at one thing that you've improved the most during the course of this season, what would that be? And I'll have you guys, as her hitters, also answer, and then I'll have a follow-up for Coach after after that answer. Yeah, I mean, I think over the course of the season, I've just become a more consistent player. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and things have definitely been rocky throughout the season. But Asia and Maddie and all the coaches on staff just helped me you know, be at peace on the court and like give it my best and whatever happens is going to happen and everyone's going to have my back. So that gives me a lot of freedom to just go out and play and play the sport that I love. And that's, I don't know, I've become a more consistent player throughout the year. 
Um, I would say that me and Ella have done a really good job with our connection. And I think at the beginning of the year, we were trying to make sure everything was perfect. And obviously, as we know, volleyball is not perfect. So I think we've really worked on trusting one another. Like even if the set's not in the perfect location, I think that I'm able to get a put a good swing on it. And then if other way around, like Ella has a lot of trust in me. So I think our just overall dialogue and confidence with one another has really improved since like August, September. I would just say individually my confidence. Um, I, my path to where I am today has been very interesting. I mean, I started as a right side, played right side in my first national championship, and then I was a three rotation outside, and now I'm a six rotation outside. Um, and so I'm constantly just kind of adding to my toolkit and my toolbox of um, different things of the game that I need to keep working on. But I just say my confidence overall and knowing that I'm capable of accomplishing great things and I'm surrounded by amazing people throughout the process and making so many new connections has just been so special. And Coach, we've seen, a, you know, talking to two freshman setters playing Sunday, are, are you seeing setters come out of high school more ready for the college game, or are these two kind of exceptions to the rule? Well, I think the growth of the sport is tremendous. You know, it's just there's better co club coaches. The, the type of athletes that we're getting, the sooner they're getting into the USA model and training with USA in the gym. Um, there's a lot of things where athletes are coming out a little bit more proficient. But, I mean, I still remember the conversations that Ella and I had early on. You know, there's a lot of pressure coming in as a quarterback to set a team that just won the national championship. You feel all the responsibility. And so for me, it was just trying to kind of tone that down with Ella and tell her that she was going to fail a lot and we were going to catch her and she wasn't going to be perfect every night. And so setting the expectations where she could just grow. And then we had to be able to put building blocks in place where she could not know what we were doing, but kind of building her confidence in terms of what we were doing in the gym, short string setting, long string setting, connections through, through certain planes and then systematically what we were, how we were running an offense and how we were going to scheme and do all that. You can't throw that on a freshman the first two, three weeks of the season. So David, who's been running our offense, has just been doing a tremendous job with her in terms of building those blocks. And you can see him talking to her a lot about some of that stuff, and we're able to talk through it. But I think where Ella has developed is, you know, I think it was one second game or fourth game. I mean, there's a ball she's running forward, and she sets this long backslide to Asia. I mean, that takes a lot of obviously skill, but it also takes a lot of guts in critical situations. So that tells me where she is confidence-wise in terms of running her offense. Go right here, please. Yeah, Coach Elliott, I think if you look throughout college sports, there's only a limited amount of programs who are good every year in every sport. And you guys at Nebraska are like that in volleyball. Can you talk about all the elements that go into that? Obviously, you and John have been coaches there a long time, but you know, administrative support, all those things that have created that. Yeah, well, the, the wonderful woman that's sitting back there, Chris Polonsky, was the one that hired me when I was uh, wet behind the ears at 32 years old and kind of trying to turn her program around that was 10 and 18. And thank goodness she, she believed in me. But, you know, the, the stress and the amount of work to sustain something at this level is tremendous, and I don't think people understand that. Um, and the more success you have, the more... I don't know. The more as a, as a coach, you just it just makes you feel uncomfortable because you, the, the success rate is it's either this or nothing, and it's not successful. So, but what we've tried to do is have fun and create the right kind of players. Um, our administration has given us all the resources. Uh, I've become a lot more of a CEO of the the business management of creating a brand and making sure, you know, relationships with coaches and what we're doing marketing wise and building the arenas and doing all the things from you know what kind of music we're using. What I mean, every little aspect of that of looking at how do we sustain this, how do we grow it, how do we keep up and, and sustain with Nebraska, you know, they're a benchmark as well. Um, and so and how do you keep up with the sport and now we're social medias and now you got this NIL piece, all these pieces come into play and then you're trying to take care of these incredible young women to give them a, a, a platform where they can be emotionally grow as young women and, and have confidence in what they're doing and you've got to be able to hire a great staff and my administration has allowed me to hire a really good staff that care about young women and that are great communicators and so I feel like we have the total package right now of what we're doing and um, you know that you, you always know by the way your teams perform and, and this growth is just super special and this team is super confident and you can just see how they're walking around right now which was not there earlier in the season and so super proud of it but to, to build the program to sustain it it's something that I lose a lot of sleep over I don't sleep a lot uh, my wife knows um, but it's something that I take a lot of pride in and uh, I want to represent well and I would love for nothing to put the cherry on top on on Sunday afternoon you can go right here please uh, this is for uh, Madison and Asia Coach used the expression a few moments ago when he was talking about Ella when he said um, 
you, the, the phrase was could just grow. In regards to Emma Halter, from a player perspective, can each of you address how she has grown? Okay, I'll go. Um, Emma's always been a really fiery player. Even last year, she played outstanding, especially in the tournament. And I feel like having a libero like Zoe, um, Emma often didn't get the recognition that she deserved. But honestly, seeing her play yesterday, I told her, I was like, what did you do before the game? Because you played lights out. But she's just always very consistent, very gritty. And I feel like as a libero, sometimes you don't really get the recognition and the shine, where it's something that we've seen her grow every single day and we knew what she was capable of. But seeing her finally get some recognition last night and hopefully on Sunday as well has been really exciting and I'm very proud of her because all her work definitely doesn't go unnoticed by us. Yeah, I mean, Em's always had energy. I mean, she's just so fiery and I call her my little bean and she's just so excited to come to practice every single day and get better and I think she's just grown so much and I mean, she's the first one in, last one out every single day and she's constantly trying to find ways to grow and learn and she's communicating with us as blockers of like, hey, that looks good. Hey, that's me, like y'all in a great setup. Like her, she's grown as a vocal leader as well um, and that's, I mean, due to confidence and just her playing lights out, as Asia said, but um, yeah, I just say vocal leader and then just, just always grinding. I mean, she's always in the gym and she's always just trying to push us to be our best version. Go to the aisle there, please. Hey, Coach, I know you haven't had a lot of time to work on Nebraska, but uh, this season, what you have seen in Nebraska, what gets, uh, what gets the most of your attention on, on Nebraska this year? Well, I think they've, they've got every facet of the game um, they, they play it at a really high level, and they're very efficient in it, right? They've got a great backcourt defense with uh, the smalls. They've got really good blocking. Um, they've got a lot of good arms. Uh, Bergen's setting the ball really well, um, and they block well. So they're just, you know, they can put a lot of pressure on you from the service line, and they pass really well. Um, there's a reason that they're whatever and one, right? And so um, we're excited, though. It should, it should be a really good matchup for us and, and exciting to play it. First row, Joey. Coach, you alluded to this earlier, the special nature of this weekend. ABC got a dynamic matchup, a chance to draw more exposure to the sport maybe than ever before. And you look at other sports, um, you know, like the, when Bird played Magic, everybody was excited about it, but nobody really knew what it was going to lead to until later. And sometimes you don't know these things in real time, but we kind of see what we've got here. So is this College Volleyball's moment that we're going to have tomorrow? This is probably the biggest moment that we've ever had. And it's uh, a moment that, I mean, for ABC to see where the sport's growing, to pick it up uh, on s football Sunday is pretty special. So uh, hopefully there's the marketing behind that to be able to make that happen. But I think people are going to be surfing through the channels. And when they see Texas, uh, Nebraska on um, with the 21,000 people in the crowd, it's going to be super exciting. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of the building blocks to get this sport to the next level. And it's, it's exciting because women's sports in general are growing left and right. And it's... Uh, I'm a proponent not just for volleyball, but for women's basketball and, and really getting people comfortable with seeing these incredible athletes. I mean, my friends are on a text chain. I got about 30 of them in California. And they're just talking about not just how well we played, the type of athletes that we have and how, I mean, one of them was comparing Maddie to Flo Hyman and is she better than Flo Hyman, who's our best volleyball player we've ever had in, in, in the world. So um, it's pretty special to see them talk about you know, how Asia hits the ball and, and, and just the way that they see athletes come out and it's breathtaking for them. So it's pretty cool to see. You can go here, please. Yeah. Asia, forgive me for asking something that's a little apart from the Final Four, but with the Pro League coming up, what Jarrett's talking about, about the, the growth of the sport, that's another element of that. I just wonder about your thoughts in, about your place in that part of the sport um, to continue on even past Texas. <coughs> yeah, I think it's honestly so exciting that um, we have these opportunities to play here in America. I think this is the perfect time for it. As we've discussed, the sport's blowing up. And this past summer, playing with a national team, I was able to see how other countries love volleyball and how they go all out for it. So I really hope that that's a level that we can get to here. But um, with this game being on ABC, hopefully it brings a lot of viewers and a lot of eyes to the sport, and then those people will want to tune in to the pro volleyball here in the States as well. So it's a perfect time, and I'm really excited to um, kind of be a part of that. You can go here, please. This is for all four of you, and Coach, we'll start with you and work your way down. In 2003, and Ellie, you may not have been born yet, so 
bear with me on this. <laughs> I asked Warren Sapp before the Super Bowl, describe in one word what winning that Super Bowl would be. What's your one word that would describe winning that national championship be? Special. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> Come back to me. I want to make it a good one, hopefully. You want to call a friend? Yeah, <laughs> yep, Asia. Um, this is hard. It's a good, great question. Uh, I'm going to call a friend, too. <laughs> oh, gosh. I guess <laughs> okay, so I can't call a friend. Um, well, you're thinking, I'll tell you what Warren said. OK. Immortality. It's a good one. <laughs> um, I, the first word that comes to mind is everything. It's not everything because I have, you know, my like foundation outside of volleyball, but it just is everything because this is what you work for and dream of as a kid. And so to me, it's everything in volleyball. Okay, my word is legendary. I think going back to back and beating a longtime rival and on ABC during prime time and in my last year would just be so fun. I mean, I have to say incredible, but I also think of just the word resilient. Um, and I feel like that's what this team has been all season. Um, obviously, didn't start as strong as we would have hoped, but um, we would say it again, but we, we're peaking right now, and that's all we can ask for. And yeah, so just say resilient and awesome. Go here, please. Ella, if I could ask you a, a big picture question, too, please. Um, obviously, Texas is going to the SEC next year. Growing up in Columbia, you've been pretty familiar with the SEC yeah. the last several years. What are your thoughts, being a freshman, about going into that new league? And you know, Jared has talked about how much growth there's been in the SEC. Obviously, Madison was a big part of that. But your thoughts after this year of, of switching and playing in that league? Yeah, I'm super excited to go play in the SEC. Obviously, playing at Mizzou is going to be super fun. All my family and friends will be able to see that. Um, and just playing in my hometown, that'll be something that's super special that I didn't originally think would happen. Um, but, you know, it's also just great for the game. We played teams like Tennessee who were so great and a lot of new competition that will expose us to just new levels of volleyball. But you have Kentucky and Florida and just all these new teams that I think will be super fun to face. I'll add to that. Just the going there is going to be super fun and enjoyable for me because I haven't obviously played in a lot of the cities. But I'm always trying to think business-wise and how to grow the game. And to me, you know, we, we in college sports, we always stick to a certain model and we just do it because we do it. And I don't know if that's the, the trend that we need to do. I don't know if we need to play 16 to 18 games in all of the big conferences. You know, I'm trying to push maybe 10 to 12 conference tournament at the end, but have more big games during the season. You know, Texas, Nebraska, Stanford, Nebraska, Stanford, Florida, whatever it may be. But for TV to be able to cover that and really grow the game in big time venues where we can be able to make that happen. So we need to look at it in terms of how can we get the best ratings, how can we do this to get the, the best opportunities to really see the tournament the right way, and how can we grow the game from a fan base. Um, and I think that's, we've always got to be looking at that from, from a coach's perspective and a sport perspective to be able to grow the game at a high level. Yeah, sure. Can you get the mic there, please? Does that change the way you schedule non-conference at all going into the SEC, or have you had a chance to think very much about that, or does it not change? No, I mean we we study it. Um, you know, we put a lot of time and effort into how we're doing our preseason because it's so critical to be a top four seed. You know, um, it, look, we even for even the start that we had, if we wouldn't have probably had the hiccup against Kansas State, we probably would have been a top four seed. So I, that tells you, you know, our, our going five and three, our, our preseason schedule was good enough because of who we scheduled and the number of wins they were getting. Go to the back row there, please. This question is for Asia. You've played Nebraska twice, uh, both regional finals. You beat Nebraska in 2020. Nebraska beat Texas in 2021. Is Nebraska a unique rival to you in Texas, or would your feelings towards this match, your approach? Be just the same if it were Pittsburgh on Sunday. Um, I would say it would be the same because obviously it's for a national championship, but I do know that there's that long-term rivalry there. And even if you don't grow up in the state of Texas and you don't really know much about it, you're going to figure it out really quickly once you get here. And I know our fans don't necessarily like each other either, so they're definitely going to be really riled up during the game. But I mean, a game's a game for me. And regardless, whoever's on the other side, like I want to come out and I'm going to be fiery and aggressive and be the player that I am. So it's just kind of a little cherry on top that it is a rival, but it should be a really fun game. Let's go first row aisle, please. 
Coach, I know you like Gregory Jim, but um, as CEO, how much consideration have you given to having matches played in what you call big time venues? Uh, we are in those discussions now. Um, really kind of looking at the marketing aspect, um, how to be able to do this. Gregory is a special place, but as the game evolves, as the dynamics for financial issues are becoming more and more difficult in college sports, uh, it's something that we need to consider. Uh, my goal has always been, can we get into being a positive grossing sport? Uh, and we're not there, most programs aren't there, but I think we have that opportunity if we look at the right kind of business model and um, we are in those discussions and, and trying to see how we can make that happen. Go back row on the aisle there, please. Coach, you mentioned a few minutes ago Nebraska's back row defense, and we've talked about how your offense can attack front row defenses as front row blockers. Generally speaking, can you attack back row defenses in different ways, and if so, how? Well, I mean, each defense that there is, there's – there's tendencies from a player, there's heat maps that Nebraska will all have and will have on them. But at the end of the day, it's being able to see the floor. You know, the, the way that Maddie swung out of system against Stanford, um, they really didn't have an answer. I mean, she just kind of painted the court in terms of where she was hitting, hard angle, deep corner. Same thing with Asia. You know, the, we, have, we have attackers that can, we're talking to them in game adjustments of what they need to be doing and what's available. Um, but. Uh, so much of it is just c controlling the ball and can we put up good balls every time for them to be able to take good quality swings. Go here. Coach, with the NIL and the portal recruiting, it's 24-7, 365. How important is it to have that strong woman at home at your house so you can take care of your volleyball family? <laughs> uh, I don't have, there's no one better than, than my wife. I mean, she's... Uh, She's the team mom. I think she sees she's around him all the time. She stops by practices. She's on a lot of road trips, and you know I think it's it's part of the family atmosphere that we try to create. And if I wasn't able to have her around, I wasn't able to have her support. Um, this job is, is hard enough as it is. But what's been fun is that the players lean on her a little bit as well. And so it's it's truly a, a family type atmosphere. And uh, I'm lucky to have her, and that's why I'm still coaching. Stay in the first row, please. Asia, there's really no way in one question we could ask you about your health journey, everything you've gone through. But do you still have moments where you say, you know, I really have survived a lot to get to to this moment? Um, I honestly try not to think about it too much uh, because I feel like as athletes, you don't like to focus on, you know, weak moments or things like that. But uh, really just throughout the long season when you go through your dog days or days you don't want to wake up and go to practice or lift, those are kind of the times that I reflect on when I didn't really have the – possibility or capability to go through the workouts or the practices that I had. So whenever I kind of have those negative thoughts creep in, I think that's really when I try to reflect on all that I've come overcome to get to this point and just be really grateful and blessed that I have this opportunity now. Anything further for coach and the student athletes? Let's go here. Um, Ella, could you talk about how much faster does the college game move than even club? I know not really high school, but club is probably the best comparison. How much faster is it, and is that the thing that's maybe the most complicated to get used to as a freshman setter? Yeah, I definitely think the game is a lot faster. That wasn't the biggest adjustment, but the, I think the biggest adjustment is just learning how to play with new girls that have played in national championships, won national championships, and just have high expectations like you, but you just want to be the best that you can be for them. and so. The biggest adjustment for me was just learning how to take it day by day and learning how to fail and get back up again and trust myself as an athlete because that's what got me here and that's what is going to take us to the national championship tomorrow or on Sunday, I guess. On the aisle, please. Yeah, Coach, after all the matches you've seen Asia play, is, is there still match, in matches where you just shake your head in disbelief or are so impressed by what she's able to do on a on volleyball court? Yeah, I think, and she's not even done with her growth opportunities of where she can go in this sport. But, you know, there's, you asked a question earlier about Emma. You know, Emma is a, is a player that, you have players that make constant decisions whether to work hard or not or to go for balls. 
Emma's never had a day off like that. She, there's every ball that <clears throat> she sees, she goes for. Uh, I actually sent her a funny little video this morning about a little dog thing where they put the, dog, the ball in the thing and it shoots out and the dog goes gets it. Like, that's Emma to a T. Like, it's, it's her. So, I mean, in terms of um, Asia, the same thing applies. Asia always has come to work and has always been this tremendous uh, athlete. Um, where she's really evolved is her confidence, um, her belief in herself, um, the leadership qualities that she's had. And she, her range now is so phenomenal that um, it just, it's so fun to watch her play. And to, to see what she did this summer with USA didn't surprise me at all. I think it surprised USA Volleyball. And, but she's uh, one of the best in the game. And um, she does it the right way. She's a great teammate. She's a great leader. And she builds, makes everybody around her better. Back row, please. Coach, one or two keys as you look at just one more match this season, one or two keys that you hope to see your team come out and execute really well on Sunday? Well, I think it's the one every coach will say is the serve and pass game has to be has to be on point. And I, I really believe that these games come to add a system play. Um, you got to find ways to be able to score. There's enough good players. Um, you know, sch schematically, there's a lot of teams that scheme and try to do things. And typically, as a program, we do not do that, um, even when we should be doing that in the regular season, because we know that when we get to this point, you can't scheme because you know they've got five good attackers and they're coming everywhere. So we've got to be great at reading and what we do. And so we're confident in what we're doing in that system. Um, and then we we train a ton at a system. But, in our practice gym. So non-setter setting, great swings, uh, attack selection uh, is going to be a key. But first ball side out and then transition game is, is going to be everything that determines this match tomorrow. We'll go here. Coach, both head coaches grew up in California. Coincidence, you think? Uh, my whole staff is from California. Our beach staff is from California. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, it's where, it's, it's where the game started. I think it, in my generation, yes, but now there's so many great coaches in the state of Texas and around the country. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, I mean, we were the ones that got it started when there was real no money in the game and you just fell in love with it. And I was originally a teacher before I got into coaching. And so it just... I just couldn't get enough of it. And I think John is the same way. Like, I think he was a football coach. I don't even know if John ever played. Um, so, yeah, it's the game's evolved and it's super fun and super passionate. Anything further? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.